And I'd like to welcome you, Mesiyat HaDashmayo, to tonight's Eilecha event. Before anything else, I just want to begin by thanking Rabbi Naftali Shif of Jewish Futures, the family of organizations of which Eilecha is a part. Jewish Futures has upwards of 10 organizations that cover the spectrum of the Jewish community, working together to ensure a vibrant Jewish future. It's an amazing display of Achdus and Elecha is one of those organizations privileged enough, relatively new. We express our cards of faith for Rabbi Shif and Jewish Futures for making this possible. Of course, we express our cards of faith to Rabbi Umayri, Rabbi Moshe Weinberger, as our Hashem will be joining us shortly. I'm going to get in trouble for this later, but I want to thank my wife Shira for all of her work logistically, back end, all the work she does on the behalf of the You know, when I look around, there are a few words that come to mind in the deepest, deepest, deepest way. The greatest limud schus, the greatest possible form of defense on behalf of our generation. After everything that we've been through collectively as a nation over the years, after everything that each and every one of us has been through in our own lives goes through the challenges and the difficulties and the struggles, to be able to put out a flyer five days ago on WhatsApp and email, and to have well over 250 men and women sign up for the possibility of being able to be warned, and the possibility of connecting to something beyond. The thirst and the search of the whole eyes after everything we've been through. Look around. This itself is the greatest expression of this wondrous bitui, this wondrous few words that I like to repeat often, and I don't think we repeat it often enough. Anachnu dor mitzuyan. This is a wondrous, wondrous generation. And on the outside, we may look unremarkable, but inside there's a thirst. Inside there's a search, there's a yearning. And I think it takes nothing other than just looking around a little bit, and we can feel that, we can sense that. A shrimp, a fortunate are we to be among those who are Mavak Hashem? I was thinking tonight, Uvachal's life means something else too. Uvachal's life, in a positive sense, how much we're privileged to have as Orthodox Jews in 2023. With yeshivas galore and koil and minion factories, lahato, glossy magazines with every kind of possible food for every kind of palate and eateries and this incredible culture of Yiddishkeit that we have. It's never been easier. It's never been more beautiful, more pleasurable. And we have a lot. But I think that the Jews who came tonight in this room have this sense that even with all of this, even with all of the words on how many thousands of pages that we're privileged to learn, and beyond all of the walls that we have the privilege of housing all of our different functions and events, and the way that Yiddishkeit appears, it seems that Shimcha, that the desire for a deep, passionate, connected relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, a romance, an ili something deeper. We haven't been fooled and we don't settle with the way that things are. We know that there's got to be something more. There has to be something deeper than this. And there is. This is a little bit the mission of Elecha. 
Elacha means to you. To you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Elacha means beyond the facade of what it is to be a firm Jew. Elacha. It's not about the what, where, how, and when. It's about a perceptible feeling of contact with the divine. Elacha. But it begins with digging deep. Elecha also can mean to you, but with a lowercase y, to each and every one of us, to get in touch with our deepest selves. Elecha, within me. To cut beyond the layers of the ways in which we express ourselves to the world, whatever that is, with our name and our history and our roles, whatever those might be, in the layers of our identity and what we do for a living and where we come from and what our background is and what our level of affiliation is and how we look. No. It's time for our generation, and this is what we're yearning for, to begin to identify with the shining essence that we hold within, which is one with what we're striving for in the first kind of Eilecha, to get in touch with divinity, to live a life of perceptible consciousness of a Kodesh Baruch beyond a checklist of things that I may or may not do. Elecha, to reveal the inherent greatness within. So I want to share with you before we sing, I want to share with you one line from the Sadiq the Peter Setsna Rebbe. It's just one line. It comes from the end of the Sefer Tzad Vizirus, which is his personal diary. Some of the most remarkable, remarkable writings from any of the Tzadik. It's printed in the back of Sefer Achshar Sabrechen. And he says like this. Ha'adam tzarech lasais sulamais. A person needs to fashion for his or herself sumamais ladders. Laalais al to ascend by means of these ladders. Hashemayim. A realm beyond. Beyond the noise and beyond the pettiness and beyond the surface level of our existence. Sumamais. Hashamayim, to take us beyond. Lefamen, not all the time. From time to time, we need those ladders in our life. We need those ladders, Elecha, to contact HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not just as a theological concept, but as a perceptible, vibrant reality that's as real as everything that we're surrounded by, which is folded up within Him. And ladders to the Shamayim within We'll speak more about it later. Four more words. Hanigun hu echad mehasulamis. Song, says the tzaddik, is one of those ladders. Hanigun, holy nigun, they come from tzaddikim. Nigunim open the gates. And they bridge all gaps with a ladder that's accessible to each and every one of us if we're willing to close our eyes and open our heart and get into a space where we can begin to shut out the distractions and feel something that's the most real part of your experience as a human being, but that we drown out so often. Hanigun hu echad mehasulamais. And so we're going to sing, Bezer Hashem. We're going to sing, we're going to speak, we're going to learn, we're going to connect. We're going to feel. We're going to have compassion on ourselves and give ourselves space to just be as we are and to pause and to stop and to open up. But the singing is not by way of entertainment. And it's not because of course it's this fun, which it may or may not be. Maybe, I think it is. But that's not the Indian here. The Indian is to allow the music, if we're willing 
to shut our phones if possible. And if we're willing to close our eyes and connect to the nigan as a portal, Elacham. Elacham. Please join me. Yeah. Hey.
Please open your heart. Please join me. Let's climb this ladder together. We did it out there. We say, Akadosh Baruch Hu, take your sheep, your precious sheep, Am Yisrael, Mipum Ar out of the mouth of the lion. Not just out of any kind of potentially dangerous situation, Mipum Ar Already enclosed within the jaws of the lion. And take your nation out of Gullus, because this is what Gullus is. This is what it means, Gullus. This is what we feel like. That we're living life within the jaws of a lion, not to settle, not to settle. We can't be settled. There's a Gullus, Chloe. There's a general exile. But the tzaddikim taught that there's a golos prati of each and every one of us. There's a golos pratis. There's a personal exile that we experience. Anytime that we feel out of place. Anytime that we feel disjointed. Anytime that we feel that a Kodesh Baruch is hidden from us. And a haster aster panai. There's not one person in this room who doesn't at one time or another, who hasn't at one time or another, or who won't at one time or another. And he or she is honest with him or herself. Feel this feeling. We want so much, we need so much. There's so many tsaras. And I ask you to join me in this tefillah. Troik yas anach. From the deepest part of our being. Yeah. 
You know, there's a tire from the Kajan Sermage that I actually heard from Rebbe a number of times. Where the Hedeka Kajnitzer sees the Pasuk, Azinu Hashamayim, let the heavens hear Vadabeira and I shall speak, Visishma Aretz Imrefi, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. And the Kajnitzer said, Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't just speaking about the heavens and the arts. But there's a Shema Yemen arts in each and every one of us. And 
And the job of a parent and the job of an educator and the job of a Jew vis-a-vis -vis ourselves, being Adam, or being Asmai, is Hazino Ashamayim, is to speak to the heaven within Hazino Hashamayim. If we speak to that part of us that's called Shamayim, the heavenly part of us, the essential part of us, the higher part of us, the more real part of us, then Vesishma Aretz Imrefi, then Memela, the Aretz part of us, begins to listen. If we can identify within ourselves, if we can identify within ourselves that heavenly essence and believe in it and relate to it and address it, then the smaller problems fade away. And I can't think really of any better way to express what Rebbe is to me and what I think Rebbe is to thousands and tens of thousands of Yidin over the last four decades and beyond, all around the world. Rebbe resolutely and steadfastly speaks to the Shemayim in all of us. And you can't help but feel in Rebbe's presence that part of you begin to emerge. I had this just, just the past day to spend a lot of time with Rebbe and I've been on the verge of tears the whole time and even beyond that. This is Rebbe's special gift. And it's our eternal privilege that Rebbe is here to share that gift with us. And so without further ado, Rebbe Moshe Weimar I really so much want to continue to hear Rabbi Yaakov Sholem and not to hear my voice again. I want to hear him. It's my nachis. I want to explain a little bit why it meant so much to me to do whatever I was able to, to send this crown jewel. It's not mine, but someone who I'm deeply connected to. We know each other for many, many years. To try to make sure that he would be here with you. Now, Yaakov Sholem, Rabbi Yaakov thought of the name Eilecha. And he had many reasons for that. But I want to spend the next few minutes explaining really why he named it Eilecha. Why this is called Eilecha. And what Eilecha means. And to understand and to appreciate What Hashem Mishbach has brought into your lives at this time. And to have the wisdom to take advantage of that. I'll begin with a story that I like to tell. It's a true story. I might have told it when I was here last time, I don't remember. Quite a few years ago, my wife and I was actually being used and there was somebody from the shul who was kind enough to let us use their apartment. I remember it was in Rechov Jabotinsky. And we had the key to the apartment, and we were told that there was a family upstairs by a certain name, and that the family upstairs would help us to show us around and to tell us exactly how 
this oven works, how it doesn't work, or how this works or doesn't work. And my wife went upstairs to speak to, the, uh, to this woman, to introduce herself and to ask about things in the apartment. And my wife came down and she was in tears from laughter, not crying. She told me the following, that this woman upstairs shared with her a story about how, like many Americans and other Anglo-Saxons come to, and foreigners come to Israel, at least it used to be this way, determined to be able to learn Ivrit. When I was a kid and we went on Aliyah in 1970, there wasn't that much English being spoken. So this woman says she was determined to learn Ivrit, and she went to an ulpan, and she tried as much as possible to use Ivrit. She told my wife that they had a terrible problem in their dira upstairs. There was a problem in their apartment. I'm sure that many of you have spent time in Etzisel, and you know that there's an unusual creature that's known affectionately as a juke. Do any of you know what that is, a juke? It means extraordinarily large and frightening cockroaches that also can jump quite a distance and they'll sometimes land on your nose. Them chutz You know, they're Israeli jukim. And she said that she had in her apartment an infestation of jukim. So she called an exterminator. And she looked up different words to prepare for this conversation with the Israeli exterminator. And she reported to my wife that this is how the conversation went. She called up this guy. And she said, Yeshli baya badirashali. That's good. Right? I have a problem in my apartment. Ma baya, what's the problem? Now, she made a mistake. She confused this word. The word, there's a word in Hebrew for incest called charakim. But she made a little bit of a mistake and she told the guy, Yeshli charidim alamir pesachili. Which means that I have ultra Orthodox Jews all over my, my, my pesach, my balcony. And he said, Cain. And then she said, Avalo rak ba mir pesach. Yeshli charidim ba midbach. Yeshli charidim bechadashit. There are charidim all over my apartment. There are she meant to say insects, but it came out there are ultra orthodox Jews. There are Haredim. And the guy the guy's not religious, you know, he was just some guy and he exterminated he says, uh, So she says, Yeshlahem Habeyladim. They have many children, offspring. So the guy says, what do you want from me? She's thinking, she says, the guy's an exterminator. So she says, I hate them. So he says, I don't love them, but we have to learn to live with them. So she says, to learn to live with them? I said, not what Sami many. So what do you want? I need Sasha Tarogotam. I want you to come to kill them, to exterminate them. So he goes, whoa, this one. Great. I need you the I need I have Yeshlam of Haridim, not just Haridim, Yehudim, I'm a Pesit, I'm a at Tamaleha Arts also in a way that we haven't seen. I grew up right after the time of the Holocaust, to parents who went through that. And I remember that when I grew up there was maybe one chasna bar mitzvah a year. And I resented my parents going. I don't know what it's like here in the UK. Knain Har. Because there was a brocha that was given by our father Yaakov Avinu in this parasha. And Yaakov Avinu said, 
Hamalach Agarlis in Mikura Yvarchas, Mikura Yvarchas and Arm. Mikura Behem Shmi, Bishem Havais, Havim Yitzhak. Vid Gul arrived by Kerav Haaretz. That is Aidi Akiv gave a brocha to Ephraim and to Menashe, to the children of Yosef at Sadiq, who grew up in Mitzrayim. A bracha v'yid gul arayiv b'kerev ha'aretz, they should be like fish, and multiply like fish b'kerev ha'aretz in the land. So the Sfasemist schus yeleinu. The Sfasemist asked, fish don't multiply on land. Fish multiply in the water. It should say v'yid gul arayiv. We understand it means like a number, but it's a strange thing to say, Bekeravaharaz. Why use the Moshla of Dagim, a fish? The Yidgul arrive like fish. So listen to what the Swasem has said. Swasem has said that if I'm a Manasha grew up in a strange world, a world that's antithetical to the to the heart and soul of a Jew, a world that Jewish eyes shouldn't see, a world that Jewish ears shouldn't hear, like our children are growing up, that you and I are growing up in such a world. If I'm Menashe did not grow up back home in Eretz so. And because of that, Esfasemis says that if I'm Menashe were like fish out of the ocean, could barely breathe, who are trying to stay alive, who are floundering and flapping, trying to manage, continuing on and living and thriving in a place like Mitzrayim. And Yaakov gave a bracha, v'yid gul arayv, that even though my children, my grandchildren, my eniklech, my ir eniklech, are going to be growing up in strange places, in a world that's so dif different from, from our world. I want them, I'm asking you, Rabbi Shalom, that they should be able to breathe, to live. They should be Jews. And I want them to remember and to know that this isn't, this isn't their natural habitat, that the story isn't over. I want them to know that the time will come that they're going to return to the sea. I want my children to know that the time will come they're going to return to me. They're going to return to Yerushalayim. They're going to return to the ocean. There's so many, so many children and young people and adults I'm dealing with all the time. And all you, I'm sure, know, who are suffocating in Mitzrayim. Who aren't making it as fish out of the water. how it shows up in different people at different times. When the fire goes out in the eyes, and the innocence of the child is lost at such an early age these days because of things that children are seeing that we never ever imagined. So you know, We have a Kabbalah, we have a tradition. It's brought down Chazal, in Sukkah, and in many other places in the Medrash. That in every generation there are 36 hidden tzaddikim. The Lamed Vav tzaddikim nistar. And the Gemara says that on the shoulders of these hidden tzaddikim, whether men or women, Kaima Alma, the world stands. <coughs> we 
we don't know who they are. <coughs> but the world exists on the shoulders of these hidden sadiqim. The Swarma Kadashan teach us that inside each and every one of us there's a tzaddik nista, there's a hidden tzaddik. This tzaddik is so hidden that the person himself very, very rarely makes contact with that part of himself that's called Yosef HaTzadik. Yosef HaTzadik was in jail. Yosef HaTzadik was in the bar, in the pit, and then in the Beis HaAsur, in Beis HaDoin of HaMitzvi. And you and I in Egypt and our children in Mitzrayim, are also imprisoned in a pit, in a bar. Then the Kudat Tzadik inside each and every one of us that wants to daven, that wants to learn, that wants to be kind, that wants to be good, that wants to be pure. Is the Tzadik Nister inside each and every one of us. Haitsiya mi mazger nafshi is the tvila of a Jew. Haitsiya mi mazger nafshi. Rabbi Nishlam, I'm begging you. I'm dying. I'm not able to breathe in the Mitzrayim that I'm in. I'm begging you. Haitsiya mi mazger nafshi. I'm begging you to take me out of this prison that I'm in. I don't feel anything when I daven. I don't feel any true joy on a Shabbos on a Yontif. I don't feel Hashem's presence when I learn a Blat Gemara. I'm just trying to finish something or learn something or be smart to say over something that dazzles people. But I don't feel your presence. In the words of two Jewish musicians from a long time ago when I was growing up, I'm empty and aching and I don't know why. So how do we rescue that tzaddik? How do we rescue the lost princess? The lost tzaddik. What do we need to do? Kardim Kal, you're all here. That means that you want that. And everybody who's here wants, if you're blessed with children and grandchildren, you want your children and grandchildren to want that. So listen, Baimek. I hope I'm not keeping you late. This is the one time that I was told that there's no exact time to end. But don't be afraid. I'm going to end at some point. <laughs> the Sram have taught us that there are two kinds of tzaddik in the star. The two kinds of tzaddik. Chlau. If you learned Tanya, this will resonate with you. I'm not going to use the language of Tanya, but you'll understand better than those who haven't learned. There are tzaddikim who are clean from the beginning. These are tzaddikim of Yehudi Ilah. These are tzaddikim of Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokein Hashem Echad. That truth of Hashem's existence, that truth of Hashem's presence and His love is absolutely clear to them. They're tzaddikim like that. These are tzaddikim 
like the others, like Av Misak Yaklex, our mothers, our Rivka Rachel and Leif, who are already, who are not in jail, who, who didn't spend time in jail. They're in that world of Yehudi love, the highest connection to Hashem. Shema Yisrael Hashem Okeinu Hashem Echad. But then there are other Jews. And this is what I'm talking about tonight. And this is the story of what Eilecha is about. And my dear friend, Rabbi Yaakov. There are other tzaddikim who are called tzaddikim of Yichudat Atah, that means the lower unity, lower case tzaddikim. They were sent into this world for one purpose, not Shema Yisrael. Those are the, those tzaddikim, those exalted, those are the Reb Chaim Kanievskis, you know, the the Chavetz Chaims, the Chassam Soifers, the Baal Shama, those are the Rabbi Vadi Yosef, you know, wherever you feel that you want to connect to. Those are those tzaddikim, wow. Most likely, that's not me and you. I don't know you, and I don't mean to insult any of you, Khalil. Most likely. The lowercase tzaddikim who we're talking about tonight, who Yaakovina was worried about, his children, those are called tzaddikim of Baruch Shem Kivayid Malchus Le'olam Ve'ed. And they were sent into this world of Mitzrayim, not like the Ovis Nimos, who lived in a place of Mandar Amokim Hazem Amish. But the Jews, the children, the grandchildren who were sent by the Creator of all souls, especially the Neshamas of the end of time, which long ago the Svamakadayashim told us that these Nishamas are the paratroopers who are going to be lowered into the world of Mamish at the end, at the end, at the end, in the darkest, most difficult time. When to believe in Akadish Baruch Hu, like the Haley original said, it's like climbing a, a wall of ice. Just to believe in Hashem. And the Holy Vision has said that in those days before Mashiach, any Jew who believes in God, he didn't say that he wears Rabbeinu Tam Tzilna, he drinks Chav Yisrael. Any Jew who believes in God is so great, is so great, and everybody was waiting to hear him finish his sentence, and then the Vision closed his eyes and he put his hand on his holy beard, and they understood him to say, he's as great as me. That a Jew who believes in God in the Mitzrayim of Tavshin Pei Gimu, is like the Heilige Rishonah. If you know anything about the Holy Rishonah, just who believes that there's a God. And that these Neshamas are Neshamas of Baruch, Shem, Kivayit, Malchusai. Because they were sent, they were lowered into the world to bring Hashem's presence, to light that candle of Hashem's presence in the darkest, darkest night, those last few minutes before the light of redemption. Yosef at Sadiq was sent to Mitzrayim. Yosef at Sadiq is the Rebbe of all of these Sadiqim. Of the Sadiqim, the storm, the Sadiqim who are disguised. Yosef was disguised in Mitzrayim. The Hemlo Hikiru, his brothers couldn't even recognize him. He looked like an Egyptian. He dressed like an Egyptian. He spoke the language of Egypt. Gabriel taught him 70 languages. He sounded like a foreigner. He looked like a foreigner. But Yosef was Yosef at Sadiq was burning with that light. And to bring that light into the world of Egypt, Mamish, and to even brought power to use the name of God, it's something we can't understand. Why our Nishamas was sent at the end of time. And the place of Yosef at Sadiq is Shechem. That's where he went to his brothers, in Shechem. It's a dangerous place. Have you been there lately? That's where he's buried. The Ishmaelim are terrified of his presence. You know that. The Ishmaelim are terrified. On the one hand, they want him to be buried there. On the other hand, they know that 
Ultimately, he's the sit and shalaset. Ultimately, he's the downfall of Yishmael and of Esav. Because Shem are the letters Shem Kavoid Malchusai. And Shem means that there's going to come a time, at the end of time, as the Navi Tzvanya said long ago, Ki az efa echel amim safer brura, likrei kulam b'shem Hashem, ula avdai shchem echad. That the time is coming where the whole world is going to see and is going to feel God's presence because of us, because of the last generation, because of those Jews who were in Mitzrayim and didn't forget that there's a Bari Eilam. And the time is coming, Ki az efa echel amim, all the nations will be able to. Here, suffer brew in a clear way. And call out, B'Shem Hashem. B'Shem Ula Avdai, to serve Him. B'Shem Ula Avdai, Shem Echad. Like Yosef was Shem. Shem Echad. Shem Kivoid Malchusai. We weren't sent here because it's easy at the end of time. But the Bari Elam who created our Neshamas, Bari Elam and Neshamas, Reba and Kalamasim, only he knew that our Neshamas would be able to not only survive, but in this place, the Yud Gul arrived the care of hearts. And therefore, The question is once again, how? If Hashem Zbog sent us here now, whether it's, whether it's the UK, whether it's the USA, or wherever that shliach of Hashem was sent, that Ephraim and Menashe was sent. How? We're fish out of the ocean. I know that you feel that. I feel that so often. So there's an interesting Gemara Bava Karma Dafnun Gimel on the bottom of Omid Beis. The Gemara there is talking about a very specific din in Chesha Mishpat. The Torah says in Mishpatim, V'norfal Shom Shor Achamar. I was talking about the, that there's a pit, a bar. Vinofal Sham and an axe or a donkey has fallen into the pit. So the Gemara the Gemara learns without going to the technicalities of the sugya, which you're welcome to take a look at, the Gemara learns that since it says in Pasuk, V'nafal sham shor or chamar, an axe or a person, that the bala bar, that the owner of that pit is chayiv, has to pay, whatever the payment is. But not if a person slipped and fell into the bar. And it's a very big question. Why? Why is it only if an axe or a donkey fell? Why not a person? So you look there in the Gemara, how the Gemara understands the, the Pasik. But the Sadiqim say the following. Listen carefully. Sadiqim say there's a difference between an ox, a donkey, and a human being, a Jew.
And this difference is what makes all of the difference. And this is what Elach is about. This is what my friend and my Talmud of Yaakov Shalom is all about. The difference is that a human being can scream out to God from where he is. The human being who finds himself in a pit, in a prison, can cry out, Mi mamakim Hashem. The human being is able to find within himself the Nakuda of Tzadik. That Yosef at Tzadik that was in the pit, that was in the jail. He's able to cry out. And to say to Baruch Hu, I haven't forgotten you in this place of Mitzrayim in my life. Please don't forget me. I'll not tishkechein. So here's where the name of Elecha comes. And this is why Yaakov Sholem wrote a magnificent sefer, a story of our lives, a story of the lost princess, Rabbi Nachman's story with his commentary. And so many hundreds, thousands of Eden have been taken out of that bore by this terror that Yaakov Shalom was sent to bring here. Now, throughout all the days of Hanukkah, many Jews have a custom of saying this Mashiach Hanukkah Sabayas David not once but twice. <coughs> saying it twice every morning. And I was just thinking about Elacha and this capital Tehillim. Kapitel Lamed, that everybody here knows by heart. I exult in you, I thank you. You've lifted me up. Hashem, I called out to you and you healed me. I'm so sick. I'm so sick, I don't know how to love you anymore. Chaylas Ahava, look in the Nitziv, what he says in Shir Shir. It doesn't mean I'm lovesick, it means I'm sick because I've forgotten how to love you. Chaylas Ahava. You talk to Jews nowadays and you speak about loving Hashem, which is a mitzvah, mitzvah is the same with their Isa, which every single day we say, after. And they'll say something, well, it means to love, Tamin Chachamim. Doesn't that what the Gemara says? Yeah, the Gemara says, but the simple pshat is, Rahavis Hashem Lakach. But we're still lovesick, meaning we're sick, we don't know how to love him anymore. I'm begging you. Shivati lechavate paini. Hashem he elisa min shaol nafshi. Domach's crying out. It's Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David. He's crying out, lift me up from the shaol, from the depths, from the hell of my soul, from its rhyme. Now listen to these words. Chisaini mi yaradi bar. In English, you have preserved me, you have given me life from my descent to the pit. Like Yosef at Sadiq. Rabbi Shalom, I'm Mamish in the pit. I'm in this prison, this pit. And even here, you haven't forgotten me. Like Yosef at Sadiq, you've stayed together with me in this place. And you've given me life, the fish out of the ocean. I'm still breathing. I still remember that I'm a Jew. Zamru Lashem Chasidov. Zamru Lashem Chasidov. Sing out to him. You ever hear such beautiful nagunim? The songs 
are not just, not just the songs are songs, even the words that are spoken are also musical. And an album that we put together from Eish Kaidish, Rabbi Yaakov Shalom sang the Nigan, and I know it wasn't his first choice, but it's a beautiful Nigan. We have an album from the Shul called Only You. It's a good night to listen to. Trust me. I mean, you don't know me, but try it. You could probably get it for free, so why not try it? Yahalu what? Shmoi b'machol. Yahalu sing to Hashem, sing out to His name b'machol. What's a machol? Machol means a circle, a dance. Yahalu shmoi b'machol. Machol is the oisius moach v'leiv, the mind and the heart. There's some people who teach in a way that speaks only to the mind. There's others who are able to sing and to reach the soul. But there are very few who their songs and their words reach the mind and the heart. That's why you were given that song. Yahalu shmoi b'machol, moich v'leiv. Zarmul Hashem chasida, kirege b'apo chayim v'tsayna. Hashem, when you hid your face, I was terrified. And here's the reason for the name of this. I don't like the word organization. It doesn't sound Jewish. This Indian. This Dovish of Gedusha. Eilecha Hashem Ekra. Vel Hashem Eschanan. Eilecha Hashem Ekra. Eilecha means to you, I am calling to you. Eilecha Hashem Ekra. Well, Hashem Eschanan, I'm begging you. What's the point of me remaining in this bar, in this pit? Hayod Chaof, I had imitacha. Shema Hashem, Chenini Hashem, Yazarli. Afachta Mispedil Mocholli. Afachta Mispedil Mocholli. Yahalu Shemoy Bimachol. Change my misery and sadness into a dance, into a song. A few years ago, there was a tzaddik. I'm going to finish in two minutes. I'm sorry. A few years ago, there was a tzaddik. You know, I was lucky to meet once in Yerushalayim, a very mysterious person. Did any of you ever meet Rabbi Usher Freund? Rabbi Usher, yeah? You heard of him? Anybody heard of him? There's ain't from the Tzadikim this time, but in Yerushalayim, everybody heard of him. You've been away for too long. Rabbi Usher Freund, they called him Rabbi Usher. He's a very mysterious Tzadik, had very different ways. You were considered to be a very fortunate person if he screamed at you, and the most Fortunately, if he gave you a patch. So there's 68 stories. There are 68 stories that I was told that he told before he was Nifta. Each one is just a few sentences. The only other stories we have like this are Rabbi Nachman's stories. Fiction. Not stories that happened. Later on, someone told me it wasn't Rabbi Usher himself, but one of his Talmidim, inspired by what Rabbi Usher said. So I don't, I don't know if it's Rabbi Usher himself or his Talmud. Let me ask you, But I want to share with you this tiny little story. This is a story of a Jew who heard that in the world there are 36 hidden tzaddikim. And the world is standing on these tzaddikim. And this Jew said, I want to go and see who these people are. What do they do? These hidden tzaddikim. And this Jew went looking around the entire world. And he went everywhere looking for the 36 hidden tzaddikim. But the problem is, 
They were hidden sadiqim. And he was asking everywhere, do you know where there are any of the hidden sadiqim? We don't know. He went from place to place with Torah, and he was very tired. Finally, the day came, and he was able to see one of these Nistarim. How he found out, he was able, maybe another tzaddik somehow told him that this is, he is one of the Nistarim, one of the 36 hidden. So this Jew was watching the Tzadik Nister, and he was a construction worker. He was on a construction site and he was building. And every time he was building something, a storm, an earthquake, something would come, and whatever he built would collapse. It would, it would be broken from Shemaim, it would collapse. And then the Tzadik Nista would start building again. This happened many times. And the Jew, he couldn't watch this anymore. He was embarrassed and ashamed to be in the presence of Shasat Sadiq. He left the place and he went home. Because the meaning of Sadiq Nistar doesn't only mean the hidden Sadiq. The word Nistar means when something is destroyed. Like so you saw Manas Livnais. To break something in order to fix it. So Malach and Shabbos. The word Lister like a steer in the Gemara. Something that's broken, something that's unresolved. Something that can lower you into a pit. Over and over a feeling that you've failed building something. There are people here who have tried to build families. I don't know you. But sometimes you see that what you wanted has collapsed. Marriages that have collapsed. Madragis in Yiddishkai, buildings that have fallen. And you get up and you start again. Tzadigim Nistar. hidden, deep tzaddikim, who was sent to be my bekoid shemaim, bor shem kevoid machus elo elon ved, to be megalo machus Hashem at the end of time. The key is never to stop davening chavah, never to stop hoping, never to stop showing up. You showed up tonight. Tell others to show up. Bring others that they should show up. They should come. This Jew has a lot to offer. And all the Haverim here. There are many others who, in the, who are in the bar, who are in that pit. You know, there are some unbelievable Israeli musicians these days. Most of them are Bali Tshuva, not all. Many of them are Bali Tshuva, many of them are wrestlers. Ibn Achim had long arms, you know. Soon he's going to get you too. <laughs> he had long arms, Ibn Achim. Long reach. And it's so hard, and I can so hard, Kim, so long, You'll see. He had long reach. So, one of the Israeli singers is a Jew by the name of Hanan Ben Ari. Anybody hear of him? More than heard of Rabusha. <laughs> Interesting. But that's what's happening these days. He has a Gewaldige song. One of, my, my, one of my children was playing it one day when they were in the house. And I heard it upstairs. I heard something. And I, 
I haven't stopped hearing this, listening to this. And my wife went with the kids and asked herself to, uh, uh, no, it was in uh, La Havdal in Brooklyn. That's a big La Havdal. Went, to, uh, he, was, he was in the States, and my wife went with the kids. They went to another concert also in Eretz Yisrael, in Yishalayim, but in, or in Tel Aviv, but my wife went to a concert I wanted to go so badly, but I was afraid I'd be seen over there, you know. I gotta, I gotta be more rabbinical in the meantime. And the refrain of the song contains the following words. I can't sing, I can't tell the note. I wish I could sing it for you. You know the song? Maybe you could play it someone. I also, I also have dreams to be a great person. I also have dreams to be close to my family. I also have dreams to be free and to be good. But like Yosef, Gam Oti Zarkula Bar. I was also thrown into a pit. Valgal Chazer Betoch Tachposet. And I rolled back and I came in a disguise. Chmo David, and Yosemi Zemizmar. But like Dovin Amalek, I make this into a song. It's the song we just sang. I don't give up. But like David Amalek, who never stopped crying out, Eilecha Hashem Ekra, Eilecha, Eilecha Hashem Ekra. Kmo David and Yosem Izem is more. Ashiru Hashem Echem, my life is a song to you. My life is a song to you. It has ups, it has no downs, it has high notes, it has low notes. Chisan in Yadibar. Just let me live and to get out of this pit that I'm in. And I'll give you more and more nachas. All of us haven't stopped dreaming like Yosef. That's why you're here. Allow those Jews who know these nigunim, these songs, who know these tires, to help you. To help you with the avoid of Eilecha. To you. To you. So that you and I will be able to sing songs and give Nachas Ruch to 120 the Bar-Yolam and Yahalu Shmoi B'Macholam to be part of that great dance. Avzah Hashem Kivinu Nagila v'nismachab Yeshua s'ulad l'asha v'amitis amein v'amein.
see with our eyes, Ruach. And it's a tefillah, like all these Nagodimists, it's a tefillah. And the tefillah is, Rebbe Shalom, let me find it in myself, let me find it in the other. Let me sense it on the street. Ruach. There's more to life than meets the eye. 
So this is the Megan. If you know it, join me, please. If not, you'll learn it. Bezer Hashem, you'll join me.
la 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 la